NMN supplements, could they be a solution to our aging problems? Are NMN supplements the beginnings to find the fountain of youth? What defines aging anyway? And how do these supplements play a role to delay the aging process? Because who wouldn't want to stay younger for longer? And as the global NMN market is projected to reach 386 million by the end of 2027, could researchers be onto something we don't know? In this video, we will look at why NMN has been studied for anti-aging, the problems and hurdles that it faces, and how much of it do we know is safe to take. If you guys are new here, my channel is all about helping you make informed decisions as well as be in the know when it comes to your health and wellness, and I would love for you all to gently tap on the like button down below. And if you really like the content, then consider subscribing as well. Also, if you guys are on Instagram, you can consider following me there too. Now, without wasting any more time, let's dive right in. If you wanted to make a trillion dollars, this is the problem you would have to solve. You would have to first control epigenetic shifts to control the on and off gene switches, making sure the good ones are on and the bad ones are off. Secondly, create genomic stability instead of genomic instability, which causes mutations. Optimize nutrient sensing ability preserve telomere attrition and stop its shortening, prevent mitochondrial dysfunction, let cellular senescence do its thing without harm, delay stem cell exhaustion, and improve intercellular communication. You do all that, and you may have pretty much found the fountain of youth. But wait a minute, are you saying NMN can do that? Not so fast, we need to take a closer look. To understand the hype around NMN, you have to first start with NAD. NAD is a molecule that acts as a coenzyme in a lot of different processes in the body. Energy, DNA repair, and what are known as sirtuins, which are the enzymes involved in aging in the first place. In fact, our NAD levels decline as we age. By middle age, our NAD levels have plummeted to half that of our youth. But why does that matter? Well, it turns out lower NAD levels can be responsible for many age-related conditions like cardiovascular disease as well as neurodegenerative diseases, which are typically hallmarks of aging. So the goal is to use NMN to boost levels of NAD so that we don't end up with age-related disease and potentially live a lot longer as a consequence. And if you know a thing or two already about NMN, you've probably heard of NR as well. NR is also another intermediate like NMN to make NAD. They basically dance together to create NAD, which I can discuss in another video if you like. But with NMN, it's interesting. People forget that it's also found in foods like avocados, broccoli, cabbage, edamame, and cucumbers. So just because it was removed on Amazon for not being a legal dietary ingredient because of its use cases as a potential medicine, you could still get it in food since in mammals, NMN is synthesized from vitamin B3 in the form of nicotinamide via the nicotinamide phosphoribosyl transferase pathway, which is your essential rate limiting enzyme that catalyzes the conversion from nicotinamide to NMN. Just maybe not in the amounts you'd like it to, which we'll get into in a bit. But before we do, let's dive into the problems that get in the way of making NMN supplements the breakthrough many hope that they would see to one day revolutionize the way we see aging. The first problem is most of our research is done on non-human subjects. A lot of the benefits surrounding NMN are seen to occur mostly in yeast, worms, and mice by looking at their SIR2 endpoints, NAD levels, and age-related diabetes endpoints. And of course what works on animals doesn't always translate the same way on humans. Clinical trials on NMN supplementation in humans have only begun in the last few years with the first one in 2019 by first examining its safety. But you see the problem? Only 10 people were involved in the study. All were healthy Japanese men. That's how new this research really is. The second problem is, how can you really tell if NMN supplements even work? In other words, how do you measure anti-aging in humans appropriately? Is that even possible? And I think this one is one of the biggest hurdles with supplements in this niche. And if you were to ask me where to start, well, I would start with the leading cause of death globally. 
it only makes sense to, which is cardiovascular disease. Do we have any research on how NMN impacts our cardiovascular health? Well, the closest thing I found was this, a 12-week randomized double-blind placebo control trial with 36 healthy middle-aged participants who received one capsule of either 125 milligrams of NMN or placebo twice a day. The study showed that the brachial ankle pulse wave velocity or the BAPWV was used to evaluate blood flow and arterial stiffness respectively, and that there were no characteristic clinical findings in the blood pressure, number of blood cells, and ABI values in both groups, and that no significant difference was observed in the average BAPWV values between the two groups, and although NMN supplementation improves age-associated vascular dysfunction in mice, its effects on human vascular function have not been yet, yet validated. It would be fascinating to have another study on this though. But hold on, aren't there any other parameters in which you can measure aging? Surely arterial stiffness and cardiovascular out outcomes can't be the only ones. By far one of the best studies that look at multiple endpoints is this one here done last year, which was the double-blind parallel randomized controlled clinical trial done on 66 participants this time, in which blood cellular NAD was measured to have increased after two months of duration. Next, a six-minute walking endurance test, which unfortunately wasn't found to be statistically significant. Then it was the SF36, which is a well-being score, which was doubled out of the placebo, which is good to see. Next was the blood pressure endpoint, which wasn't statistically significant. And lastly, what is known as HOMA, which checks the insulin sensitivity of the cells. Because as we age, we become less sensitive to insulin, and that brings on a lot of trouble down the road. And again, between the two groups, findings were not found to be statistically significant. So what did they get out of all of this? In the end, the two endpoints they got were the increase in NAD and ADH levels in the serum and the improvement in overall health and walking endurance, which were clinically significant, which to me is still great because it opens up new horizons for further research. And remember, this is an ongoing investigation, so it's going to be interesting to see where we are 10 years down the road. Now you might be thinking, what about Dr. David Sinclair's research, who's a professor at Harvard University, who has studied this for decades, as well as the role of sirtuins in aging? Well, his book on lifespan actually is what made this subject so popular. But what if I wanted to see how NMN works on me? How much to take? Now you might have heard that Sinclair takes 1,000 milligrams of NMN in one dose in the morning, to me, this may be too much, but 250 milligrams of NMN per day would also suffice as well. 250 to 500 milligrams per day could be ideal since that's what the Japanese study looked at. Always talk to your primary care doctor before starting out any new supplement to see if it's right for you, because for the most part, they are tolerated just fine, but when taken at high levels, you can experience nausea, diarrhea, flushing, stomach discomfort, and indigestion. And many people who do take them, they, they do say that they feel sharper and have better concentration when they're on it. So that's also very interesting to see. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. What do you think of NMN and or NR? I'm more curious to hear from you. Click the subscribe button if you found any value in this video. And until then guys, I'll see you on the next one.